What's going on guys, it's Max Max 24 and over the weekend Ubisoft did their UB Forward slash 15th Anniversary Assassin's Creed Showcase. They showed off a couple games, they revealed a couple games, so we're going to talk about everything right here. You probably already know most of it, but I'm going to give you guys my feedback, my ideas, my reaction to this press conference. Before we get into that, please do to drop a like, comment, subscribe to the fans, and all that just all the fans up, I should tell you what to do. Follow me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I open most on Twitter and TikTok, sometimes on Facebook, barely on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, subscribe to me here. And with that, let's talk about the UB Forward. So, overall, it was an alright showcase, alright? It wasn't amazing, it wasn't that bad either. There was a lot of games I didn't care about, there were some games I am super excited to see more about. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. And they kicked off the press conference with Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Now. This is the second Mario and Rabbids game. The last one was Kingdom Battle. This one's taking a more sci-fi look instead of a fantasy look. And I just... I don't know. It To me, it looks like glorified DLC. It looks like it could very well have just been an expansion back to Kingdom Battle. I don't see anything in here that screams this is a brand new game. Now, maybe I'm wrong when it comes out. Maybe I'm not. I also don't see a lot of fanfare, a lot of hype around this title. Because it comes out in October, apparently. So, I don't even know that. But yeah, it's more Mario and Rabbids. The turn-based combat, everything that you come to expect from the first one is here in this one. The big reveal of this one is that Raymond is going to appear. So all you big fans of Raymond and his adventures, you'll get to experience them in Mario and Rabbids. He's coming in one of the DLC packs, so he will not be there at launch, but he will be there eventually. And I think that's a pretty cool addition to the roster. I mean, again, I'm not super excited about Mario and Rabbids. I'm interested in it, but not super over-the-top excited about it. But I think Raymond will be a really cute addition to the roster because, you know, it's Raymond. Who doesn't like Raymond and his zany adventures, especially with the Rabbids? Um, Skull and Bones got showed off more, and I, I don't know. I just don't know about this one. All right, Ubisoft, you announced this one, like, when? 2014, 2015? I think it was actually 2018, but, like, I, I it feels like 2014. But you announced this a little while ago. Then it got restarted a bunch and a bunch and a bunch and a bunch. And now we're here. And I just, I'm not going to get super excited about it. Because what I wanted was Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, but not in the Assassin's Creed universe. And this, this, it's not that. It's not that. All right, this... Looks like a Sea of Thieves type clone, but with not as much heart as Sea of Thieves has. Now, the other thing is the big gameplay they showed off was the customization. Alright, you can put cannons on it, you can make your ship how you want it to look, and that's... Okay, alright, cool. That's like the, the bare necessities of a pirate game. That didn't, that didn't get me any more excited about the title. I'm sorry Ubisoft just didn't. That just, again, that feels like what every pirate game should have the ability to customize your pirate ship so so far you look like you're doing the bare minimum now maybe it'll be really good i'm hoping it's really good i'm hoping i'm proved wrong in november but right now i'm just i'm not there i'm not there i don't i'm not sitting here anticipating skull and bones because i just i think if you waited way too long i'm worried about it i'm worried about what it's going to be with the actual like things are gonna that are gonna happen in the game what's what what is it like it's a sea of thieves clone without the fun so maybe i'll maybe i'll be proved wrong let me know if you're excited for skull and bones you know i want to understand that um writer's republic is getting a season four i don't play writer's republic so i'm just gonna just gonna move on right past that one because it's not a game that interests me. I don't I don't care about downhill skiing. I mean not downhill skiing, down, downhill biking. See, I don't even know what the game is about. I don't I just don't care. The Division 2 is getting more content. The Division 2 has been a pretty successful game for Ubisoft, which is surprising because the Division 1 was kind of cut early. You know, they kind of moved on to the Division 2 quickly because they kind of messed up with the first one. But this one's been pretty successful for them, and I've enjoyed it. Okay, I haven't jumped on this year. I played a lot last year. I played some but when it first launched. But I've not jumped on with these new seasons, the like remix seasons slash new content. But yeah, they're doing a season 10 and a season 11 with new outfits, new story, new stuff. And they're planning a fifth year of content. So that shows you right there that Division 2 is definitely a success for Ubisoft. And they definitely want to focus on it. And they're probably making a Division 3 at the same time. And I'm excited to see where the Division series goes. Because again, I enjoy it. Is it the best game in the world? No. But is it? Is, are they fun? Yeah, they're fun. I mean, post-apocalypse, you know, the mechanics are fun. The Dark Zone's really fun. Speaking of the Dark Zone, the Division Heartland is a new Division game, a new free-to-play, standalone game in the Division universe that was announced. Now, it was leaked beforehand, just like pretty much everything in this UB4 was leaked beforehand, but it's going to be 
a PvP PvE type game. So it feels like it's gonna be like the dark zone. It's gonna be it's gonna be a division game. It's gonna be you know everything you expect, and it's free to play. We don't really have any much gameplay. It's yeah, it's, we have no release date. It, I mean, I think free to play is probably the best direction that division series can take because the sixty to seventy dollar asking price is kind of rough for people trying to enter the franchise for the first time so this will probably be a really good jumping off point for people to then go get division two division three you know stuff like that and i think it could be a decent time all right taking us out of the big cities of division one and division two and putting us into heartland u.s into this fictional town that's that'd be interesting i think it's fictional i think the silver silver creek is that is that fictional maybe it's not fictional i don't know but i've heard rumors it's gonna be a lot like escape from tarkov which i've never played so this will be my experience with that gameplay, with that type of gameplay, because I'm definitely going to play it because I like The Division. Um, more Division news. The Division Resurgence is coming. That's cool. Not not going to play this one. It's a it's a mobile game. It's a mobile game. Uh, yep, you 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 guessed right. You know, mobile games are the future. That is where the developers can make most of their money. So we're going to be seeing more and more video games on mobile as time progresses that's just the way it is now i'm fine if that doesn't do a disservice to the console and pc type games you know if they still make those but also want to do the mobile games i'm fine but if mobile games start taking priority then i'm going to be a little worried but the division resurgence is the division it's a multiplayer division game um set in the world of division they're gonna be do they're doing like dark zone stuff and stuff I, i'm not gonna play it but if you if you are in a mobile game, if you want to play a mobile division, then there you go. They're also talking about their other another big mobile game they're coming out with, Rainbow Six Mobile. It's Rainbow Six Siege, but on mobile. Rainbow Six Siege was pretty big for them. I think it's probably fallen off recently. So the Rainbow Six Mobile is probably their way of trying to revitalize the gameplay, revitalize the mechanic, revitalize the money stream. And if you're gonna play it, have fun. I'm not going to. But that's coming out September twelfth. They also talked about how Netflix and Ubisoft are partnering up to make some mobile games. They're going to be offering three mobile games through Netflix's mobile game platform that nobody's using. Um, Valiant Hearts 2. Um, that's, yeah, I guess. The second Mighty Quest. And a mobile Assassin's Creed game. So these are all going to be available in 2023 and beyond. It'll be this new like partnership with ubisoft that's one thing ubisoft seems to really connect with the streaming services right they like netflix they have a working relationship with apple tv plus due to mythic quest so i i think they really want to make like this be this like multimedia brand and this is another step in their relationship with these streaming services now i'm not going to play any of these games but if you are, let me know, because I don't play mobile games, you know. I understand there's a market for them. They're just, I'm not that market. They also talked about Mythic Quest, like I just mentioned. Mythic Quest, Apple TV Plus, and Ubisoft work together on that. I think Ubisoft is, like, the one of the producers on it. Um, season 3, it's coming out. So, I, I really enjoy that show. I think it's really fun. I think it's really funny. I think you should go watch it, especially if you like video games. But, I'm excited for Season 3. Trek Mania... Um, didn't even know this was, this was, this was a thing still. Yeah, it's getting more content. I mean, that's cool. Um, console, cool. I didn't know this was a thing. So I thought Trackmania died years ago, but here we are. Trackmania is not dead. It's thriving. So rocksmith plus um got a got a little just an ad um did it think it just got an ad i don't is there any is there any, is there any new information about it because they announced rocksmith plus last year i don't think there was any any new information about it just i think you can like try it for free right now or something but okay thanks ubisoft thanks that's Looks cool. Looked look the the same as it did last year because it's been out for a year. But that's cool. Good job, Ubisoft. Just Dance, twenty twenty three. That's also coming. So that's a surprise. You know, that's just as surprising as when a new Madden's announced. I mean, oh my gosh, they're doing a Just Dance this year. Like, who would have thought? Who would have seen that coming? I 
Okay, thanks, Ubisoft. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, we're moving on. Uh, then the big show, the big thing that pretty much everybody was there for was to see the future of the Assassin's Creed franchise. They've been hyping up that this UB Forward is going to talk about the future. And most of the future was leaked beforehand, but it's all it was all confirmed during this press conference. The last 30 minutes were devoted to simply Assassin's Creed. And let me tell you, Assassin's Creed fans are eating good, right? And I love me some Assassin's Creed. I'll, I've always loved Assassin's Creed. I always will love Assassin's Creed. Even through its bad points, I've still loved it. So the future looks very bright. So first up, Assassin's Creed Mirage has officially been revealed. Now, Assassin's Creed Mirage was heavily rumored for months. For months. And then it was leaked, rumored, leaks, rumors. All, there's just a lot of stuff. And they've all been confirmed. So you're going to be controlling Basim from Assassin's Creed Valhalla in a game that's supposed to be going back to the roots of the series. And that, that's really exciting, okay? Assassin's Creed has gone through a huge growth, huge evolution, and is not the same series as it was. I mean, the last three games were big open world RPGs that took hundreds of hours to complete. So this one's going back, though. It looks like it's going to be a very core Assassin's Creed story focused on the Assassins and Templars, but actually the hidden ones in the Order of Ancients, because this is before the Assassin's Creed was formed. And it's going to be going around to this small city. It's going to be centrally located in one city, and you're not going to be going over this 100-hour journey. It's going to be very focused in Baghdad. 20 years before Valhalla and featuring Basim as he becomes the assassin that we know him to be in Valhalla. And this was originally going to be a DLC for Valhalla, but has now been turned into a full-fledged game. And I am I am very excited. Now, all we got was a CG trailer. So we don't really know much about the gameplay, but they have said it's going to be going back to the series roots. So, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens with this title. It's coming out in 2023. Speaking of Valhalla, Valhalla is getting more content. It's called Valhalla The Last Chapter. It's it's going to finish up the story and tying up the quests. And it's free to play. So that's, you know, it's cool. I mean, Valhalla's had a lot of content. You, that game has been very successful. There's been, I've seen some narrative circling on the internet that Assassin's Creed series is in shambles, but Valhalla had made made them like a billion dollars or something, you know, a lot of money, and they've been churning out DLC, churning out DLC, and this is the last DLC for it, apparently, until they decide they want more. Um, a new mobile game for Assassin's Creed was announced called Codename Jade, and I don't know how I feel about this one. So, Codename Jade is going to be set in ancient China. It'll allow you to create your own character, and it's a mobile game. It's, it's going to be Assassin's Creed on mobile. I don't understand Ubisoft's need to uh, sideline China for spinoffs. Assassin's Creed Chronicles ch kicked off with the China game. That's the 2D, 2.5D like side scroller. That's the only China we've gotten so far in Assassin's Creed. And then now this Codename Jade is going to be a mobile game set in China. Ubisoft, have you ever considered making like a full-fledged Assassin's Creed in China? Just a thought, just a thought. Bring us to ancient China as an assassin in a mainline Assassin's Creed game. We didn't get any gameplay about from Codename Jade. We just got literally a name, and that's it. But if you like mobile games, enjoy it, all right? I hope you do. And then we got Assassin's Creed Codename Red. Again, we didn't get gameplay. We didn't get anything. Just a logo, a code name, and a setting. Codename Red is going to be the next big Assassin's Creed, the next big RPG Assassin's Creed game like Odyssey, Valhalla, and Origins before it. It'll be taking place in feudal Japan, finally. Everybody's been calling for an Assassin's Creed in Japan, and Ubisoft is finally going to deliver. Now, I'm a little worried about it because Ghost of Tsushima beat the series to it, and that's a fantastic game. So I'm worried that Assassin's Creed Codename Red will not live up to the what Ghost of Tsushima was. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'm excited to see where this goes, what this is. It, we don't know when it's coming out. It'll be sometime 2024 or after. But yeah, it's the next. it's the next big one. And then the final Assassin's Creed game that was announced at this press conference is Assassin's Creed Codename Hex. Again, nothing. We know nothing. We don't even know a setting, really. All right, this one, 
We got a logo. It looks very witchy, very horrorish, very scary, creepy. There's rumors it's turning the witch trials, so we'll have to see. But that that's all we got. That is all we got. So, yeah. Like I said, Assassin's Creed fans are eating good because that is four Assassin's Creed games announced. Mirage in 2023. Codename Jade in 2023 or 2024 or beyond. Then we got Codename Red 2024 or beyond. And then we got Codename Hex 2024 or beyond. I'm assuming how it's going to go is we're going to get Mirage next year. Then we're going to get probably Codename Jade either next year or the year after to, you know, bridge the gap. And then I'm assuming we're getting Red and then we're getting Hex. So... That's a lot of content. That's a lot of Assassin's Creed. This franchise is planned out for the next foreseeable future. And that's exciting. And on top of that, Netflix is hard at work on an Assassin's Creed live-action Netflix show. I'm hoping that's better than the movie. I It won't be too hard, though. But that was all that Ubisoft announced. Now, the first half of the press conference was a little iffy for me. There wasn't a lot of new information revealed. We just got some gameplay for games that we already knew existed. Nothing really new information on any of them. And I think the only big announcements were like just Dance, which we know that that was coming. That's not a surprise, Ubisoft. The big stuff was saved for the end. That last 30 minutes was great as an Assassin's Creed fan. That was fantastic. But for other people... Probably not. If you don't like Assassin's Creed, this press conference was not for you. But for me, I really enjoyed the last 30 minutes. I could have just had the last 30 minutes. I did not need everything else. Well, if the last 30 minutes were all it was, I think this press conference would have been amazing. But the first half kind of just made it be like, this is an all right conference. I mean, it's all right. But let me know what you thought about the UB Forward event. All right, there's a lot of things talked about. You know, maybe there's something in here that I don't like that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Maybe you're already pre-registering for the... Rainbow Six Mobile. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next video.